All right, all right. Good evening and good night, and welcome to the It's Your Perspective Talk Show. It is uh, Wednesday, October 14th, 2015. My name is David, a.k.a. Kimba, a.k.a. Christian. Uh, we have the uh, beautiful and talented Audrey Brown in the studio tonight. How are you good doing? Good night. I'm great. How are you? I'm good doing night. good, man. We're back at it again. Yes, I just, we are. I just want to say that this is the It's Your Perspective Talk Show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, weekly, 8 p.m. until... Uh, we do have a telephone number, 340-201-9005. Uh, you can also text us on that number as well. But most importantly, you have to go to our website, streaminglivefromthevi.com. Uh, go to that website via your smartphone, your Android, your Apple, your Mac, your Windows PC. Open up your browser, uh, type in streaminglivefromthevi.com, and you'll be able to see the show tonight. Uh, we do have email as well, streaminglivefromthevi at yahoo.com. Uh, we are in a high-tech, low-tech studio. That's what we call our studio here. Uh, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. No radio, no TV, internet only. We have no frequency. We're not on the local cable channel. But you can catch this show uh, on the internet via your smartphone or your computer. Uh, we have two Facebook pages. Search for our channel. It's your perspective talk show. Uh, you can search for our channel and see all our shows. Uh, close to 200 shows on <coughs> Uh, you, you stream, uh, Ustream.tv and uh, also YouTube.com. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to CHS Class of 1982. And I think Miss Brown represents. CHS Class of 1977. 77 is in the house. Yes. Woo -woo. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Vanessa, Julie, Sharice, and Roshima Quiet Storm Smith for helping us, helping us out in the past. And most importantly, to all our past guests, thanks for coming on our show. We're on Twitter. Tweet with us at VI Perspective. Uh, we're moving straight forward and up. The show's mission is just to inform, entertain, and empower everyone. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, our sponsors, uh, Magdalene's Party Decor, nice. uh, weddings, bridal showers, anything along those lines. Uh, give her a call. Her number is 340-690-0420. And real quick, I just want to put up some of the, uh, some of the things that she's done. Uh, she's into uh, decorating. If you take a look right there, you'll see some of the stuff that she's done there. Some functions. I'm not exactly sure where they are. Uh, here's some other stuff there. Wherever they are, they're elegant. Yeah, she does a great job at this stuff. Uh, actually, she's from CHS class in 1982 as well. Big ups to her. So that's her thing there, uh, is to, uh, to, to to decorate your function elegantly, eloquently. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Supersonic Computer Services. Uh, if you have a virus, uh, need a new hard drive, need to set up a small network, give these guys a call. Uh, their email address is yourpcisdown at yahoo.com. And uh, before we move on here real quick, uh, Ms. Brown always kind of inspires us with uh, some kind words of wisdom. Do you have anything for today? Well, let's see. I have a poem. And it starts as, As human beings, when we encounter a challenge, we have freedom to choose how to react. Every decision that we make leads us down a different road. We will never come to exactly the same crossroads. Every decision that we make has significance. The tiniest choice that we make reverts at throughout the entire universe. So remember that our decisions be, we have to think before we react, okay. really, because our decisions, you know, just takes us some sometimes in places that we don't want to go. Okay. So we have to be, you know, just take a minute. Take a minute to react. think. Yes. And then react. React. Makes sense to me. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Brown always gives us some inspiring, inspiring poetry there. But as we move on here, I just want to, we do have some guests in the studio tonight. Uh, here they are right there. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Hugh Payne and Mr. Alf. Alfonso Franklin, there they are right there. Wave to the crowd, as we always say, you guys are streaming out right now. <laughs> the entire world is seeing you guys. We need to be waving? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so welcome. And I know, Mr. Payne, you wanted to... Uh, well, yes. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes, sir. Just make sure, make sure that switch is up on the mic there. Push it all the way up. Okay. There you go. All right. I just wanted to introduce uh, Mr. Franklin to everyone. Um, as you know, Mr. Franklin is the executive um, director for our town, Frederick said. And um, he's our answer man. He runs the program. He knows everything about the program inside out. 
And I'm telling you, he is, he is a great CEO. So just to let you know something about him, Mr. Franklin um, normally doesn't come out at night. <laughs> but for this occasion, <laughs> I made it my personal business to make sure that he's going to make it here and, and be here. And yeah, so we, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. Okay. So I'll disappear off the screen and let Mr. Franklin go ahead and take over, and he can tell you all about our town, Frederick said. And okay. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Payne, uh, erstwhile uh, president, and thank uh, uh, the, uh, it's your perspective for having us here as guests uh, this evening. I must tell you that uh, we missed out on a previous opportunity because uh, we had difficulty finding him, but uh, uh, <laughs> finally we connected today, and I just could not believe that... <laughs> We would have, it's a good thing that Mr. Mr. Christian did come down and meet us. But let's get on with the, uh, uh, what we're about here this evening. We're here to talk about the town of Frederickstead, and there's a lot of talk that's going on uh, uh, in the community, especially in the town of Frederickstead, about the, uh, the condition, the appearance of the town. And it has to do with the physical appearance at, uh, of the building, mm -hmm. many that are in disrepair from uh, lack of attention and, and principally from, from uh, the amount of time that these buildings that are made basically out of wood have suffered the, the uh, hurricanes and the rin winds and the weather, the hot sun and the paint peeling off. Uh, we have set upon a, uh, a program for the last 10 years or more to restore and uh, rejuvenate and, uh, many of these buildings and the, uh, the uh, appearance uh, of, of the town of Frederickstead. Uh, many of you may have uh, heard us when we invited the, the newly elected governor, Governor Mapp, to our uh, uh, event that we had at St. Gerard's Hall. And uh, the whole purpose of that was to learn from this governor what are his plans uh, for the town of Frederickstead and how we could uh, work with him in, in order to revitalize the town. As many of you may know, uh, since uh, the refinery left here, there's been a lot of uh, business is closing mm -hmm. uh, in the town of Frederickstead. I've, I've counted at least 20 that are suffering from the lack of, of, of finance uh, from people who have been laid off uh, from uh, Hubenza. So people really have no money to spend. Uh, in, in August, we had a, a program with the delegate to Congress, Stacy Plaskett, and we discussed how uh, or what could we possibly do in, in order to bring better economic activity in the town of Frederickstead. And at that meeting, we had many of the, the governor's uh, cabinet members uh, who gave their views on what some of the things that are wrong in the town of Frederickstead mm -hmm. and what can we do. Well, first of all, let me tell you that the town of Frederickstead is on the historic register of uh, the United States, which means that uh, it is a historic town. And as such, there are certain rules and regulations that we have to follow and, and property owners have to follow in, when they are restoring their building. The other problem is the financing. In order to restore your building, many of them are very old, uh, you have to have the finance. And unfortunately, the town of Frederick said is a low and moderate income community. In mm -hmm. other words, we don't have any millionaires living in the town of Frederick said, as far as I know. Uh, so <laughs> it's very difficult for a property owner who has uh, perhaps a house in Wim or, or LaGrange or whatever, but there's this house that uh, his mother or his father left for him or her. And it means now that they have to find the money uh, to restore that building and bring it up to stand standards. And when I say these standards, they're not only uh, uh, standard 
for the, the people who just walk by or drive by and look at the, uh, the buildings and say that building looks terrible. It's the historic preservation standards. Mm -hmm. There is a, a government agency in the town of Fredericksburg, and it is the historic preservation office. If you want to build a house, or if you want to restore your house or renovate your house, that is the first place for you to go, is to the, the, uh, the Office of Historic Preservation that is in Fort Frederick. Mm. And you tell them what your plans are and what you expect to see uh, from the renovation and the restoration of your building. They have rules that you have to follow. For example, uh, you cannot go into Frederick said to restore a house and paint it whatever color you want. Mm. They have what they consider historic colors that reflect the, uh, the, culture, the culture and the ambience yeah. of the town of, of the past. So there are, there are also places where you can go to and get those historic colors. And it, it, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing because it, it creates some kind of uniformity. Uh, several years ago, uh, there was a program in Fredericksburg called the uh, 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 paint and scrape and rejuvenate program. This this is where we uh, got money from uh, at at the time the beautification commission mm -hmm. to uh, lend money to property owners to paint their properties. They they had to pay uh, I think it was five percent of the cost and and then they would get the paint. Uh, to paint their building mm -hmm. and it made such a tremendous difference believe me it's unbelievable the difference just painting some of these structures uh, made and and this is one of the things that I advocate we advocate right now is uh, uh, to paint many of these buildings that look so decrepit and run down because the, the, the color brings out uh, something uh, a different ambience to the town a newness. many of, many like of a newness. the properties right now uh, uh, suffering and looking bad from just lack of paint. Mm. Okay, uh, so uh, what we do when when we, someone comes into our office and says, "I'd like to have my property restored," and and so we did have a program at one time where where we would lend money to property owners at below uh, the, the rate that the bank would charge you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have been trying to get the, uh, the government, the Virgin Islands government to do, is, is to, to search and look at uh, what's called the uh, uh, Community Reinvestment Act. That, that is a federal law where banks that are, do business in a low and moderate income area uh, required to lend money to property owners at below whatever the, the market rate may be. Mm -hmm. uh, in some places in the states, uh, the interest rate may be as low as, as 4%, but then when you go into a low and moderate income area, uh, because of this law, this federal law, then uh, they cannot charge you, if you meet those qualifications, any less than, say, 3% uh, interest rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is key to what we're having in Fredericksted is, uh, is people who do cannot afford to restore their properties at the going market rate, but they have this opportunity because they are in, in a low and moderate income area and they would have to qualify for, uh, in, in order to get this lower rate. Uh, of course, uh, presently, you will not find that in the Virgin Islands. I don't know. You may try to go to your local bank and see uh, what it works. And if it don't, then I think maybe you ought to take a, a, a visit to, to the uh, lieutenant governor's office and they will ex explain uh, uh, that, that federal law uh, to you. But you have to meet certain qualifications. Requ qualifications, yeah. Uh, Presently, one of the things that is happening in the, the town of Fredericksted is that uh, we have some uh, uh, volunteer organizations and, and they have uh, taken it upon themselves because they feel that it is important and necessary uh, to clean up the town. And when I say clean up the town, I mean clean up the town. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things that you will see as you enter the town at the post office and at, at Fisher Street and, 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 and Prince Street is that uh, during the summer, uh, there's been some young people from the schools who have painted uh, a mural right by the, the bus stop there. Mm -hmm. And it's a very nice looking uh, uh, mural. Uh, we, we, we are concerned, however, that these, these murals, these paintings meet certain standards and that they're relevant to the history and the culture of the town of Fredericksburg. Uh, we don't want to see a, uh, a repeat of what has ha happened in New York City several years ago when anybody who had a, a paintbrush and a can of paint can uh, go and paint up any subway car that it, it was a, a horror mm -hmm. and it cost the, the, the government in New York City millions, millions of dollars in order to get the paint off of the cars and everywhere. So we, we would like to see uh, uh, that done but we, we want to make sure that, uh, that p paintings are relevant and that they, they add something to the uh, historic ambience of the town. Uh, uh, one of the things that we have done in the past is after Hurricane, uh, after Hurricane Hugo, there were many uh, buildings that were destroyed from uh, the devastation of the hurricane. And, and we did get uh, a, a grant from the uh, Housing Finance Authority uh, to restore uh, properties. Mm -hmm. And it worked very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, almost at that point now. It's not as bad, but there are certain areas in the town that look uh, worse than the others. Uh, the, the area of uh, what, what we call free gut, for example, and that, that area is at the, the, uh, the southeastern corner of the town of Fredericksburg. And many of you may not be familiar with that area because uh, unless you have to, you don't go there. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it is uh, uh, an area that really needs some upliftment. In that area, we have uh, <clears throat> my brother's table. That is a, uh, a, uh, a building that houses a, a, for lack of a better term, a soup kitchen mm -hmm. where uh, uh, people of uh, little means or no means would uh, go to this, uh, this place and have a, get a free lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been, uh, uh, we've had a, a building donated to us in that area right next to this place and uh, we would like to do something in that area to upgrade that area. And I think it's going to happen because uh, uh, we have been promised some some finance in order to make those uh, uh, those renovations in some of the buildings, uh, so that we can paint up some of the structures, that we can uh, have a place that gives access to people who come to eat lunch, so that they don't have to be standing on in the street or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that they they can perhaps even learn something about how to go and get a job or, or whatever their needs are. Uh, so we, we can help them out with that. Uh, we, we are also cleaning up that area uh, because we, we see the deterioration of the, 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 the buildings and uh, uh, we know that, uh, that there are times when uh, people see those buildings, they, they just uh, get the impression that the whole town is that way mm. and it is not so uh, but but it needs work and and when we get money from the government uh, LEPC in particular that is the law enforcement planning commission and we get that on the basis of the fact that uh, many of these areas that have run down properties and houses that are uh, uh, not occupied uh, that they're squatters and that sort of thing. There have even been fires and people have gotten killed. Mm -hmm. uh, we board them up. We board those properties up to remove that 
that danger. Mm -hmm. But more than that, we want to restore these properties so that people can live in them, people can live and, and pay rent and, and to upgrade that 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 area. That area, yeah. And and we have gotten some good response from the, uh, the the administration, and we're just waiting until such time as uh, as the money is available. So mm -hmm. that there's, there's good news there. Uh, uh, one of the other issues that uh, we're talking about is the the, the lack of uh, a ballpark and. Uh, what we've heard is that uh, we should expect to see the, the ballpark, a stadium, and uh, other facilities being built down uh, in the uh, Paul Lee Joseph Stadium area. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that serves more than just to have a, <clears throat> a ballpark there. It also will, will provide jobs because this is what we need in the town of Fredericksburg. Uh, people need to be able to come to Fredericksburg and, and get a job in, in the town of Fredericksburg, and not necessarily in a restaurant or someplace like that, but to work as a carpenter or, or a plumber or whatever, and we hope that that's what the, uh, the ballpark is going to do. It's going to be an opportunity for uh, uh, people who do plumbing and carpentry and electricity, electricians, uh, to, to come to the town of Fredericksburg and, and work uh, to build that uh, sports facility and uh, is, is that is that coming to light? I beg your pardon. Is that is that the ballpark construction? Is that something that's you know? Well, the latest word that we have gotten is that it, it will be started in the very near future. Okay. At, at that meeting we had with the delegate, uh, we were shown a uh, a rendering. Okay. Uh, a, a new rendering of uh, what it will look like because there's been some changes that has been made with respect to the topography because uh, part of that, uh, that land where this, this uh, facility is going to be built is or was a, a, uh, a floodplain. And I, I remember when I was growing up, going to school, and I was born in Fredericksburg, by the way, uh, that uh, there were always floods there when there were heavy rains, very heavy rains. Mm -hmm. So the Army Corps of Engineers worked out a plan where uh, uh, they can mitigate that problem and uh, the, not only the ballpark and the stadium, but uh, the, uh, the festival. Yeah. Uh, Is that still going to be a permanent, sort of permanent? Yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. Okay. And, and it, it, it will be an upliftment for the town of Fredericksburg because then you'll have people working in the town of Fredericksburg and patronizing the restaurants, uh, uh, many of which have already left, mm. but hopefully they'll open up again once uh, work, work is being done. Uh, again, I, I'd like to say some more about historic preservation because uh, they have not been operating to the full extent because the, 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 the previous uh, uh, director has uh, uh, resigned or, or uh, and, and so there hasn't been a lot of activity going on with our preservation. To, uh, Uh, it is the organization, the government agency in the town of Fredericksburg and throughout the Virgin Islands for that matter, that tries to, uh, it attempts to uh, demonstrate the, the, uh, the, the culture, the history and the culture of, of the people who lived in the town of Fredericksburg, who were there basically after uh, the, uh, the the transfer of these islands from Danes to American and 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 before that the people who lived in Fredericksburg and to show the progress that they have made uh, that many of these historic buildings and there are several that we are uh, concerned about one being the uh, the building in which uh, one of our past governors the Governor Alexander Farley in the building in which he lived, which was right on the corner of, of Market and Prince Street. Uh, 
Uh, that building is uh, uh, totally in disrepair, and uh, we would like to see the property rebuilt. And, and we have plans of uh, uh, putting a, uh, a museum there, not only on that spot, which is number two, Mark, Market, Market Street, but next to that building is a, a building of uh, his, historic significance because that is where three of our top musicians in the town of Fredericksdale live. And, and, and when I say top musician, these people were top musicians of Archie Thomas, Wesley Thomas, and the father, Adam Thomas. Uh, they lived in, in the same building, and uh, as you all well know, the, the name Archie Thomas should ring a bell with Archie Buck Me Up, and uh, uh, Wesley Thomas, who uh, was the uh, leader of the band in the uh, in the Navy in Puerto Rico, and the father who not only played uh, instrument but he taught music. Uh, he was also a furniture maker, and and he repaired organs even way back there at that time because mm. we're, we're talking back in in the thirties. Uh, uh, even then, uh, we had good people. And, and this is what the history and the, the ambience uh, ought to reflect in the town of Fredericksville. We also have the vegetable market that uh, today is not like a market. It's nothing like a market. It's like a resort for anyone who wants to come there and spend the night there. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and we have really uh, uh, been working with the uh, Department of Agriculture, who are the ones who own the market, and with uh, the police department in, in order to restore to that uh, uh, vegetable market its it, a proper place in the history and, uh, and the culture of the town of, of Fredericksburg. Uh, that, that also goes for some other buildings, and, and many of you might go into the town of Fredericksburg and you see some buildings, some structures that looked like at one time they were uh, very good buildings, but uh, they're badly in need of repair. But there seem to be no standards where uh, historic preservation or some other government agency, uh, because there are no laws that says that there is a standard of maintenance. In other words, if I have a building that I have to follow certain standards, otherwise I I would be cited for something or have to pay additional taxes or whatever. But uh, many of our historic properties which have been there for years, uh, you take for example, uh, practically all, four of the major churches, the uh, St. Patrick Church and the St. Patrick School, that uh, where the schools were taught by the nuns. There's also the Moravian Church and the Mar Moravian Hall that uh, is where uh, the the first school for for the enslaved black people uh, were able to be taught uh, uh, because prior to that the Danes did not allow them to to learn and to go to any school but that was the first school where they were actually teaching mm -hmm. uh, and and the uh, the enslaved were learning there's also the uh, uh, the Lutheran Church, and we know that that's where most of the Danes went, or all of them for that matter. And then there, there is the, uh, the, the Anglican Church. Uh, that, I, I, need, I must give them comments because they have, uh, in the past uh, several months, have been restoring their property, and it really looks good. They, they've been doing a good job, and, and we always like to commend people when they do this restoration on their property without somebody forcing them to do it. There's also a building at, and, and that's the very same corner uh, that's restored and uh, previous to the present owner restoring it, it belonged to uh, a, a lady who ran the apothecary. Uh, many people don't know when I say the word apothecary, they don't understand what it is, but at the, at the time when I grew up there, there was an apothecary, and the apothecary is a place that actually uh, uh, formulated 
uh, the same kind of drug that we get in pill form here. They were actually uh, uh, made in, in sometimes in liquid form, sometimes in powder form, but that's what the apothecary did. And they have a very, very lovely historic building right there on the corner of, of Queen and, and King Cross Street, mm -hmm. the apothecary. So, uh, Mr. Franklin, can I, can I ask you a question? What about, the, what about personal property there? In, in Frederickstead, I know that. Well, there's a lot of personal properties, and, and uh, unfortunately, those are the ones that are suffering most from the wind and the rain and the hurricane. And uh, since there is no enforcement agency that forces people to re repair or restore their property mm -hmm. after some uh, disaster, then if you can't afford it, then you just don't. The building just stays there and it crumbles and falls. And, yeah. yeah. In further disrepair. That is something that we're trying to work on to get uh, the legislature to form, along with DPNR, some, some, uh, some minimum standard that the property must maintain in order for it to meet uh, a standard or prevent them from getting a, uh, a citation. We have been helping people to do that with some of the money that we get from the government and other organizations. Uh, simple things uh, like just power washing their buildings or, mm -hmm. or painting their buildings or something of the sort. Uh, you'd be amazed the difference it makes when uh, you're able to just put a coat of paint over a building. It makes such a tremendous difference. And, 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 and we're going to be uh, working con uh, consistently on that uh, going into next year. We have also put together a, a town plan. This book here that you see is a town plan which we uh, started in, uh, I think it's, uh, it says 2006. We finished this book and in this book it has uh, some of our ideas of what the town should look like, how we should go about it, how the government should be formulated in the town of Frederickstead in order to uh, uh, keep certain standards of uh, quality of standards for these buildings. And, and we're, we, we work with uh, the Enterprise Zone that is a part of EDC, the Economic Development Commission, mm. uh, who uh, uh, has taken it upon themselves uh, to uh, gather all the uh, organizations such as us, <clears throat> not only on, in Frederickstead, but also in Christianstead and Charlotte Amali and Savon, in order to, to bring up these uh, buildings uh, to certain standards. And obviously, because they have an impact in their present condition, they have an impact on, on uh, the uh, eco economy and the economic future of, uh, of our towns. When, when investors come here, and there are investors who do come here with the, with the hope of uh, uh, looking at the properties and buying them, and many people also come off of a cruise ship and they see a place or a property or building that they may like, and they may want to buy that building. And, and, and this is the reason why we feel that is important, because uh, when, when people come here and invest money uh, of that sort and improving a property or buying a property and uh, uh, putting up some kind of a business uh, that uh, it's going to contribute to the economy, the then economy. Uh, we, we're fully behind them. So the, the more that we keep our buildings uh, up to certain standards, the greater the opportunity is for, uh, for people to buy up these properties and not necessarily outsiders but even uh, uh, local. local and na native people because if people come to the town of Frederickstead and they see a property uh, looking nice, they may want to buy it. Mm -hmm. Frederickstead is a beautiful town. It has a beautiful seascape and a beautiful uh, landscape in the, the hills of Lagrange and the north side and uh, Sandy Point. Uh, but but it, it, it needs to have the ambience of the the whole town to get people to come to Frederickstead and take a look at the town. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did a talk uh, a year ago at uh, 
an organization, and, and they were surprised to hear me uh, speak about Frederick State in such glowing terms. Well, <laughs> I did because, uh, yes, basically, Frederick State is that way, but we have to keep it that way, and we have to keep it up that way. Uh, Mr. Franklin, let me ask you, how, how do you envision it looking? How do you what? Envision uh, Frederick State Town looking. Uh, in, your, in your book there, in your, in your plan there, I mean, how do you envision it looking well, uh, down the road? Well, we have to commit ourselves to invest money in the town. Not only, not only Frederick said, but Christian said. I, I was, I've been quite surprised uh, to go to Christian said and see almost the same condition in, in Christian said as, as Frederick said. And, and obviously the loss of the Hovenza refinery has a lot to do with that because you're talking about losing about 2,000 people uh, who uh, make, get money, what, every two weeks, get paid every two weeks, and they can take that money and, and go in a restaurant spend or in town, a bar yeah. or, or wherever. But uh, that money is flowing through our, econ our economy. We don't have that anymore. So people don't have money to spend. Of course, one of the, of the cause of the litter, and there's a lot of litter in both towns, and, and you may be aware that uh, Waste Management Authority have, have given up on, uh, on cleaning the streets. It's being done primarily by volunteers now. Uh, and uh, in some of those businesses uh, in both towns uh, uh, have uh, uh, merchandise that uh, have throwaway packages. Mm -hmm. And it's not always that somebody goes into some uh, restaurant or a store and uh, take the wrapper off and uh, just fling it someplace in the bush or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what is happening now is some of those businesses are contributing towards the cleanup of many of the properties in the town of Fredericksted. And, uh, and so, so, Mr. Franklin, so you're, you're saying that the agency doesn't, clean the streets anymore? Uh, what, what You said DPNR or, or, or what is it? Uh, no, 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 uh, no. Waste management? Waste management. They, they, don't, they don't clean the streets anymore? No. How, how, long, how long has this been like that? Oh, it's been that way now, I, I would say, for about six months. Oh, really? Okay, okay. They, they just don't have the money. Okay. They just don't have the money. And uh, uh, they have also reduced uh, the the pickup where they would pick up uh, house pickup yes. twice, twice a, uh, yes. a month I was just going to say that yes once a month okay, okay. so uh, all those things come together and uh, we we are trying to organize ourselves uh, uh, there are several organizations in the town of Frederick a volunteer organization that uh, are addressing this problem. And uh, uh, we need to organize ourselves because we don't want to see uh, uh, three or four people doing the same thing. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, if we're talking about some people cleaning the street, some people painting a building or, or, or something. But we want to make sure that we get a maximum amount of work out of, uh, of volunteers and that we do things like uh, the, uh, the beaches, for example. Uh, that uh, we, we've had several uh, uh, groups that have gone and cleaned up. Uh, you probably seen it in the newspaper. Clean up the beaches. Clean the beaches, yeah. Uh, while a lot of our income comes from people who come here just to go on the beaches, right. and when they go on the beaches, they hopefully they want to see some place that is clean and not a lot of uh, trash and whatnot. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Franklin, let me ask you, what's the uh, historical colors? You spoke about, you know, specific colors. What are usually the historical colors that, that are used? Well, you're talking about on the buildings. On the buildings, yes. Well, then, uh, I can't tell you red or green or blue or okay. whatever, but they are colors that were chosen by historic preservation. Okay. And the stores that sell these, these, these paint colors, mm -hmm. they know what they are. All right. So when you go there, if you want to paint your building, mm -hmm. 
and uh, you give them some idea of what you would like to see your building look like, they have a, a book, a, a swatch that they will give you to take to the store and uh, the store will have that color. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a good idea because I, I've seen some some buildings that were painted and they look like horror mm -hmm. because right. you know you probably go to the store and get the cheapest paint and and then you know so in order to have some kind of uniformity or some conformity uh, there there is a set of colors that specific colors that you must use when you repainting your building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me, let me ask you too, Mr. Frank, as part of how this plan is going to look in the future, uh, any, any major any major enhancements to the town of Frederickstead? I know that there's the ballpark and, and the permanent stadium, uh, well, but anything besides that that's going to be sort of a major change? This, this town plan. Okay. And we're not the only one who has one. Christian said has a town plan, and, and, and what we... A plan to do with the uh, the enterprise zone is to utilize these town plans that were made up by specific organizations. In other words, our town Frederickstead made up a, a plan for for Frederickstead, and uh, it's an organization in question said that made up a plan for them that were accept was accepted. Mm -hmm. Same thing with St. Thomas, and same thing with with St. John. But what is the problem? Money money we we also would like to see a, a, a senior center okay because we did have one called Aldersville but it did it is in horrible shape and uh, and uh, while uh, when we spoke to the governor way back uh, that earlier this year he didn't make any promises uh, but uh, uh, those things are on his agenda, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to see, or we would, at our town, Patrick, we would like to see uh, a mobilization of uh, government agencies and not-for-profits such as us, because we operate every day. It's not, we're not there just every week or something like that. We're there every day. We're open every day. And uh, we do what we feel is important to improving the condition of Frederick said. But, but we need the government and the legislature to co commit, to commit uh, finance. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're attempting to explore is, is to go to uh, the Department of the Interior from some, whether it be a grant or a loan and getting a three million dollars for the, the town of Frederickstead. Okay. We can do a lot with three million dollars. First of all, we can provide employment, which is number one, it's important. And, and with that three million, we, we, can, we can hire uh, an architect and, uh, and, and uh, carpenters and plumbers and electricians. And in a final analysis, we can improve the appearance of the town. And once you do that, once you do that, businesses are going to come because as people move in when they when people see good buildings new buildings modern buildings uh, one of the problems with the buildings in the town of Frederick said is many of the lots the building lots are so small that if if you had a family of, of four for example no place to play no place to play <laughs> no place to park your car mm -hmm. right and, and yes, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, no place to play, because that's exactly what happened after the hurricane, mm. is that people didn't look to restore their building. They went to Wim or LaGrange or someplace else to get more land, because this was a younger generation that with, with children, mm. with a family. And uh, yes, it was okay when, when I was there to live in a house that had no not enough space in the yard because there weren't any cars running up and down the street. So, <laughs> but, but now there's traffic and everything else. Uh, so you, you do have to have space. Yeah. And uh, I, one of the things that's going to, that has to happen when, when we begin this, uh, this rebuilding uh, program 
is uh, the 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 plot, the house plot, mm. are going to have to be enlarged. Which means that uh, if you you if, if what you want to build is too big for the lot, maybe your neighbor would sell you his or her property. Property. Think that that's what going to have to happen. Okay. And, and a place to park your car, a place where your kids can play outside. Mm -hmm. Mr. Franklin, if one wants to get in touch with you because they may want to volunteer or they may want to uh, donate, how, how do um, they get in touch with you? Well, to, to donate to us, you can uh, send us money at our town, Frederickstead. Uh, what is it, number 20? 7723550 that that is the uh the office number the phone number okay mm -hmm. but the property number we have a property in Frederickstead where our office is it belongs to us okay and, and by yeah mm -hmm. uh 502 uh, yes yes and, and by the way one of the things about uh, our building it it's a restored building where our office and our headquarters is a restored building. And the building was damaged so badly after Hurricane Hugo that uh, the owner donated the building to us. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And we were able to raise money, and we invited uh, UBI to come in our building with us because one of the things we saw was in the town of Frederick said, you have uh, four, uh, uh, what would you call, hauling housing communities, mm -hmm. four of them, mm -hmm. housing communities. And you say to yourself, now all these people, suppose these people wanted to go to, to college. How, how would they go? Do they get on their buses? Do they have a car? Many of them don't, mm -hmm. right? So we were saying to the university, why don't you come to us? Why don't you come to Frederickstead? And the fact of the matter is, they did, and they still partnership with us. They they have uh, all kinds of training there. And, and that's the UVI cell. Right. Uh, U UVI yeah, cell. Okay. Right, pre precisely. Yeah. Okay. And and we've been with them for over ten years. Okay. Yeah. So. And, what and are your operating hours? Uh, well, well, we're there from nine to four thirty, out and uh, but the university have their own. Operating hours there. Okay. What what other what other big uh, what other big plans uh, do you have for Frederickstead? Now you talked about. Uh, well, I, I will tell you. Uh, unfortunately, our plans are just our plans. Because okay. Our plans have to coincide with what the government, what mo money the government has. Okay. Or what the government's uh, uh, plans are. I mean, uh, for for example. One of the things that we would like to do is to uh, do a complete rebuilding and restoration of the cemetery. Now, to a lot of people, it doesn't, it's not important, but a lot of our visitors that come here in cruise ships, for some reason, they go to the cemetery. Uh, mm. and, and I can see why, because many of them probably have relatives you know, who at one time lived here and, and they died. But the appearance of the cemetery, if, if you would go in there, I mean, you wouldn't recognize it as a cemetery. And, and it, it really needs to upgrade it, to mm -hmm. be upgraded. We don't have any uh, caretaker in the cemetery, not in Frederickstead. You, you may have in, in Kingsville and Christiansted, but, but there is no. So no, that's Frederick. one of the things that, that we would like to do. Uh, to, but to answer your question, what we need to do, what we want to do, is money, capital, finance. Mm -hmm. And there were some programs uh, in, in the past that provided uh, some funds, but it, they've dried up. And, and what's available right now uh, has to come from the federal government. The, if you remember, several years ago when uh, on the... President Obama and, and President Nixon, there, there were two programs where they actually 
gave you money. Mm. I mean, every household got money, and they gave the government a lot of money. Mm. And we had uh, applied for quite a number of money, uh, a lot of money, to do certain things which we felt needed to be done. Well, unfortunately, we got none of it. One of uh, my personal feelings, and I think a lot of other people, is that uh, Fredrikstad is uh, the, on the bottom of the pecking order that St. Thomas and Charlotte O'Malley or Christian said uh, uh, they come before us they come for first. whatever reason. They come, yeah. Right. And uh, when they finally come to Fredrikstad, there's not really not a lot left <laughs> for, for Fredrikstad, yeah. Yes. And yeah. I mean, it, it has to be that way. If you take a look at the, the town, it is, it is not that the people aren't doing what they should do, but if the government has to take the lead and set the example, set the example so that people will follow. Mm. And, and they also to give people opportunity, a job, so you get a job uh, to, to go to the bank and borrow money. The bank is not going to give you money to fix up your property if you don't have the money, and that's what we need in the town of Fredericksburg. And, and as mm. I said, there is a federal program that allows uh, or mandates that banks should, uh, the bank should lend money to uh, low and moderate income uh, property owners in order for them to uh, meet certain standards. Yeah. That is something that, uh, that we pursued several years ago uh, when the Vargrave Richard was, was the lieutenant governor, and, and he led us along with the, the banks. And unfortunately, the, the person who was taking the lead with the banks, uh, Celestino McBean, he died. And, uh, and, uh, but this was a result of that, because we had to do this to tell the banks what we intend to do with the town of Fredericksted. And, and you see it has all of the pictures of all the buildings. We also did a survey. We also did a survey with each property owner to, to say, well, if you had the money, what would you do with this building? And it was a very, very good survey because we, we found that there were people who still wanted to live in the town of Fredericksburg, but they wanted to, to build or rebuild with modern amenities. Because mm. a lot of those properties in Fredericksburg, they still have the rem remnants of outdoor uh, uh, toilets and uh, you yeah, know, the kind of thing that yeah. they've never been rebuilt after a hurricane to meet certain uh, modern standards. Standard, yeah, yeah. So a any any thoughts? Uh, how? What are your thoughts on on? Um, you know, we we have cruise ships coming in and the whole pier and that area down there at the waterfront. Uh, any 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 enhancements to that? Well, uh, as to a matter of fact, yes. Okay. I uh, just uh, last week. Uh, we made some suggestions to uh, the governor's office in, in Fredericksburg is that uh, we need to do something with the pier to make the town look inviting from the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. In other words, when the cruise passengers hit uh, the pier. And they're walking towards. They should see something. Yeah, something there, that, yeah. That's welcome, you know that uh, I've seen places where you see flags, American flags, this flag, Virgin Island flag blowing in the breeze and uh, it, it, it changes the whole ambience. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's also some, uh, some things on the pier that, that needs to be painted, upgraded, do, do something. It, it makes a big difference because believe it or not, I've been on several cruises and when you leave that port, they gave you a, a, a questionnaire to ask you uh, how you felt about that port. Did you have a good time? Is there something good about it? Is there something bad about it? So based upon that, I think the cruise ship sometimes, uh, uh, that, that they invest money in, in different uh, uh, places, different destinations mm -hmm. that they go into. And, and they, they help some of these people to build up their infrastructure uh, to give uh, their passengers a, a better experience. 
Which is something that we badly need here, is that... Uh, so well, we don't know if that's actually happening here, though. Do, do we? Well, we need to have the money. Okay. We need okay. to have the money in, in order to do that. There are places here, picturesque places, scenic places, that, you know, a lot of people just go to a destination and just the scenery. I've, I've gone to Hawaii to a place called Punch Bowl Cemetery. It's a military cemetery and when you go into that place it's, it's like a park it's not like a graveyard it looks like a park mm. where people are sitting like in, in a in a pic, picnic atmosphere around a grave of, of a of a relative or loved one like yeah. That. yeah but it it looks like a place more of, like a park as opposed a park. to a cemetery yeah, yeah. okay yeah. and see you you've been hearing that um, from mr franklin that the big thing the very important thing money we need the money, and, and so I am sure, Mr. Franklin, that you will be very open to some kind soul if they wanted to send and, you know, help with oh. millions of bucks, 500 bucks. It, it, it doesn't matter because, you know, it helps. Well, uh, there are... There are... Let me, the so Department of the Interior, for example, a uh -huh. uh, couple of months ago, they'd give us half a million dollars for the uh, emancipation, I'm not the emancipation, the transfer uh, that's going to be coming up in, uh, I think it's uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Half a million dollars, if, if we had half a million dollars, that. Uh, we could do a lot to I have a million yes. dollars to change the appearance of the town of Fredericton. I wish we did. Okay. Uh, the Several years ago, we did a, a, a remake of the, the, the waterfront mm -hmm. from all the way up from the Ma Mason Pool mm -hmm. uh, down to Budo Park. Mm -hmm. And that was done for the... Uh, uh, emancipation uh, anniversary. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but money, money is is what we need, and money is what the Virgin Islands government don't have. Uh, we hear uh, time and time again that uh, places like New York, for example, were uh, uh, spending a, a billion dollars to do in infrastructure changes, to do this, to do that. And uh, unfortunately, we can't even afford the $30,000 here to, to help clean up a lot of the brush and the debris, and, and including to fixing some of the road, mm -hmm. which seems to be the priority right now of the present administration, which is good because uh, every good community has to have good road in order to attract business and in order to attract uh, industry and Im improve the economy has to have good road. Uh, I, again, as I said from the very beginning that the loss of Hosvenza has been a tremendous blow to us in the town of Frederick said because I know, for example, that they were one organization that we could depend on to get uh, operating money every year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but since they are gone, obviously, we don't get that in, anymore. And, and many of the EDC beneficiaries uh, don't really give that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we, we're looking forward to the government uh, initiating some kind of a plan where uh, those uh, uh, businesses that are required through uh, uh, beneficiaries uh, to contribute more as, as it's required in, in their, uh, in, in their with, the, with the government to, to give money to uh, uh, 501c3 organizations such as ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. any, any, uh, any events coming up that, that your organization is going to be putting on? Well, uh, there are events, of course, uh, the regular Christmas thing. We're going to be doing that again. Okay. Uh, 
so we can look forward to that. But uh, but you will also have uh, uh, events uh, by individuals, uh, organizations as uh, fundraisers. My personal feeling is that uh, is that you spend more on putting together those kind of fundraisers that it's not really worth it. Mm. We need a large infusion. Yeah, of money. Of yeah, money. Yeah. And uh, I, I've spoken to the delegates uh, about seeing whether there aren't uh, uh, organizations or in, any uh, agencies of the government that that would give us sufficient money just to restore the town of Frederickstead or the town of Christianstead or whatever, because mm. we're, we're, we're not able to do it by nickel and diming it. Mm. Not going to happen. Yeah. You, you you have to you have to make up your mind that you're going to have to spend big money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you said and you said earlier you said uh, what did you say one million dollars would 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 surely help, right? Well, it'll be a start. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's two properties in Frederickstead right now uh -huh. that that uh, number one historic property. The one is called the Cumberland Castle, and and the other one is called the Durant Tower. Okay. And and uh, they need to be rebuilt, uh, to be rebuilt. And and uh, there are historic properties, but it will take almost one million dollars to, to do the, two to, properties. To do the restoration. Okay. To do it right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if anybody knows anywhere where we can get uh, one million dollars, <laughs> we're ready and open. Open. <laughs> Okay, if, I could, that, if I could just the, say we here. We have the plans all here. We've worked on, on the, the plans. Okay. So, Mr. Franklin, if I could just say real quick that this is the It's Your Perspective talk show every uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's about 9.09 p.m. And so, are uh, you okay? You need a break or are you okay? Well, uh, I, I take about a five-minute break. Okay. This is the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today is uh, Wednesday, October 14, 2015. It's about 9.14 p.m., and my name is David, and the studio with me tonight is... Okay, uh, and our guest tonight is uh, Mr. Alfonso Franklin. There he is right there. Uh, so we're back, and uh, just to kind of in closing, you just wanted to sort of touch on a few things real quick. Okay, uh, I, I, I didn't say this in the beginning, but uh, I want to get people to know me a little better. First of all, I was born in the town of Frederickstead, and uh, I grew up, I went to school in the town of Frederickstead, graduated from St. Patrick's School, and then I went to uh, New York to study accounting and bookkeeping. But that was quickly aborted by the military who took me to the army for, for two years. And, and I then spent uh, 39 years at uh, a business that I worked for before I re in New York before I returned here in 1991. Mm -hmm. And since 1992, I've been a member of our town, Frederickstead. I've been president, and uh, I uh, resigned twice. And I came back, and uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Payne was gracious to be uh, president, so I I supported him by uh, being the uh, executive director because uh, I I would say that. Uh, I probably know every single building, every single lot, and everybody who lived in them <laughs> uh, over the years that I lived here before I went away and since I've come back. Come back, yeah. So, Frederickstead is my, my home, my heart and soul. I, I love the town of Frederickstead, and it, uh, despite the problems that we're having now, I still think that there is hope. We just need to see the government make a major
commitment to the town and and uh, yes Charlotte the Mali is important because it is the capital and yes Christian said it's important because it is the capital of St. Croix but we are also important because there are people living in the town of Frederick said and they deserve an equitable share of what the, the, the government raises in terms of taxes and fees and in other words we need to get our fair share mm -hmm. and they the government may have a legitimate reason for not giving us our fair share but but we need to have our representation that is the people we elect who recognize that fact who recognize the fact that we're not getting what we need in order to bring ourselves up to standard with St. Thomas and uh, St. John or wherever else. Uh, one, some, one, some of the things that we're going to be working on uh, at the end of this year and into next year is we want to find funding to lend to property owners to restore, rebuild, and preserve our buildings in the town of Frederickstead. And this, this needs to be serious with the legislature and with the, the the, the, the government and the governor is that we need to finally commit ourselves to getting it done. Every governor since Governor Farley has promised that they're going to rebuild the town of Frederickstead. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Because I know every single one of them and I've worked with every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I mean, a, a few dollars will come to us, but but nothing to get the job done, really. And we're hoping uh, that this administration will uh, see fit or necessary to do what needs to be done in order to accomplish what we have in here and what the governor might have. Just that ballpark alone <coughs> will bring some, some additional economic activity to the town of Frederickstead, mm -hmm. because if it is the kind of facility that we think it's going to be, we will not only have uh, 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 our young people playing those ballparks, but uh, you may remember that several years ago that uh, major league teams did come and uh, and, uh, and and play in 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 the park that we had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, my personal feelings about two people. Uh, William Sisters, who I think are, are two great professional sports people uh, worldwide. We could have them here for exhibition uh, to demonstrate to our young people how two, two sisters who come out of the project in, 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 uh, in Los Angeles and have risen to the top of the tennis world. I mean, it is it's something that just moves me every time that I see those two women. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Tim, Tim Duncan and mm -hmm. his people, I, I think. If, if we presented opportunities for him, he can come here. He may even in, invest some of his own money to build up some of, of these here. So I, I think that we, we have to, we must, we have to do something different in order to accelerate our, obje our, our objective to, to improve on the condition of the town of Frederick said. Uh, that those two properties that I spoke of, Cumberland Castle and Durant Tower, mm -hmm. are right on King Street, the main street. I, I think they're, they're an eyesore right now and we must do something in order to bring them up to standard as soon as possible. And, and uh, <clears throat> we, have, we have to be very careful <coughs> when we paint these murals uh, over the town because we want, we want them to have some some significance, some historic significance, not just to paint them up, just to make them look like there's something there, like there's people painting, but they must be saying something to young people mm -hmm. when, you, when you paint these things, that uh, somebody uh, who was born in the town of Frederick said a uh, hundred years ago did this or did that and put that person's picture up on top of uh, some wall or something so that it, it has really some meaning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then the other thing is the need for providing information to property owners. Many of the property owners 
whose properties are in violation don't even know. Who tells them? Uh, DP and I don't go out and give them a citation and say, well, uh, you need to come into the office and tell us what you're going to do with your property. Mm. So we need to properly inform those people. Uh, and, and we ought to set some standards, some maintenance standards that tells you that if you don't do so, 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 the inspector is going to come around and he's going to give you a ticket, just like your car. If you're going uh, above the speed limit, he's going to stop you and give you a ticket, and you're going to have to pay a fine. Mm -hmm. We need to be doing that in, in, our, uh, in our town. Uh, then uh, we definitely need to have somebody in the Office of Historic Preservation who would give guidance and, and advice to some of these people who want to restore their properties in a town of Fredericksted to let them know that they that that you cannot just uh, go and build use any kind of material that you want but there are certain guidelines and rules you you have to follow and uh, uh, we are open to working with anyone who wants to come into the town uh, but it has to be uh, a structured meeting because we, we've been there for 27 years because we're serious. Mm -hmm. We're serious. And we don't have a lot of members because a lot of people who join organizations join organizations to have a good time. We, well, we don't, we don't, we don't have a, a good time. Yeah, we, it's, hard, it's hard work. We're serious. <laughs> yeah. We're serious. And when we talk to the government, we talk seriously. We want to sit down with the government and talk with the government. We don't we want to hear uh, something on a talk show because it don't mean anything. I hope this means something. <laughs> but to go on some commercial radio station and be talking all day long, you know, uh, we need we need to do. You, you need, you need sit action down with now. The need action and, now. And his uh, his, his uh, cabinet to seriously talk about what we can do to improve the condition of Frederick State and to, and to provide. Uh, economic upliftment for the town of Fredericksburg because it's one thing to make the town beautiful, but the other thing is, is to is to make the town uh, produce and, and uh, money so that people can live in there, people can uh, they have stores and that sort of the thing. Neighborhood right? stores, little restaurants, little restaurants, and yeah, neighborhood stores right, and that kind right, of stuff. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> you got another question or? No? Uh -uh. Well, Mr. Franklin, uh, just real quick, just give us uh, like your contact information, your address, uh, your telephone number. Well, uh, my name is Alfonso Franklin, of course, and uh, the telephone number where you can reach me is at 772-3550. And I, I must say that's three four zero. Just in case someone's listening in Japan somewhere, it's three four zero seven seven two. What seven seven two three five five zero? Okay, right. that's okay. the telephone number uh, of Frederick said. And and please, anybody who would like to know anything about the town of Frederick said, I consider myself, you know, somewhat of a historian because mm -hmm. not a lot of people left who know what I know about the town of Frederick said and I'm not going to tell you that I know what what happened uh, uh, 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago mm -hmm. but I, I know a lot about the building I know a lot about the people who own the building I know a lot about a lot of the uh, uh, the history and the, the town of Frederick said so don't hesitate if, if you uh, need to get some information about the town of Frederick said We'll be only too glad to help you. To help and, out. And by the way, we have some some uh, some images of the town of Frederick said, which which are, are uh, paintings that were done for us uh, for someone about the building, even in their dilapidated and run-down state. If you see these things and you're interested in art, first of all. You'd be amazed, mm. you know, and uh, we have them on sale, so okay, uh, just stop in and uh, maybe we can you you can help us and we can help you in terms of the colors. <laughs> <laughs>
So that number again is 340-772-3550. That's, That's right, correct. Right, right. If you want to get in touch with uh, the, our town Tom Frederick Frederick said, said. Yeah, and yeah. the address is number 502 Hospital Street. Yeah. Frederick Stead, St. Croix, of course, 00840. Right. That's correct. Right. right. And uh, the lady who may answer the phone is uh, my assistant, uh, uh, Carolyn Urgent. Uh, so uh, she will be able to give you whatever information you may need, and, and uh, she would know where to get me if she me or Mr. Payne mm -hmm. if, uh, if I have to be there. Okay. Right Tomorrow, for example, I have another such meeting at this in Fredericksted where there are a group of people who are trying to do exactly what we are talking about. Okay. And uh, they focus more on, on, on uh, the cosmetic side of it, like cleaning up the mm -hmm. town. You know, oh, okay. And, and that, that's good too because they've done a considerable amount of work in Fredericksted and Christian said, in, in terms of making the the town look a little more presentable, attractive. yeah, presentable, attractive. yeah. So, All right, Mr. Franklin, uh, I just want to say thank you for coming out to our show tonight. I I am thrilled. Thank you for that because, history. Uh, yeah, I know. It's been like such that, a yeah. long time that we've been I know. trying to come here. <laughs> and thanks to you, you came and found us. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> when yes. we were lost. <laughs> <laughs> now you're found. Uh, now you're found, right? Now you're found. That's nice. Well, I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Alfonso Franklin uh, for coming on our show tonight and also Mr. Hugh Payne, who's off on the side here. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, as we like to tell all our guests, uh, when you come here, you're always welcome in the future. Not a problem. And I'd just like to say real quick that this is the It's Your Perspective talk show. Um, we're streaming live from the VI.com. We're in a high-tech, low-tech studio. Uh, we have many videos of recorded live shows on YouTube and Ustream.tv. Uh, the show's mission is just to inform, entertain, and empower everyone. And I just want to say thank you to uh, Audrey Bar for helping out tonight. Any final it's words? Always my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it all today. If tomorrow never comes, you'll never regret regret a day. Mm. That's it. Very good. All right. So uh, we'll leave it at that, and we'll be back tomorrow. We do have another guest lined up. Until then, uh -huh. we're out. <laughs>